Hi and welcome to another tutorial for Excel users. In this video I'm going to look at working with lists and focus on navigation. Now I'm sure you're aware of all the general navigation that you can do on a spreadsheet using keyboard and mouse. For example you have the arrow keys just moving around small distances. You have the page down and page up key and you have the home key which is useful for getting back to the first column of your spreadsheet. And I'm sure you're aware as well that Control and Home will always take you back to cell A1. Worth remembering. Control and End will always take you to the very last active cell on a spreadsheet. So again, if you're working with the table and you quickly want to move to the end of that table, Control and End is one way of doing it. But it may be that you have other data on that spreadsheet as well as a table, and so that might not be useful. So how else can you navigate on your table with the keyboard? Well, if I just click any cell in that table, I can use the control key with the arrow keys. And what I'd like to do here is just press the control key, keep that held down, press the up arrow key, and you'll see that jumps me to the first row of the table, the title or the column heading row. If I hold the control key down and press the left arrow key, that moves me to the first column of the table. Hold the control key and press the down arrow, and that moves me to the last row of the table. And control and right arrow, as you may have guessed, will move me to the last column of the table. So if I now keep the control key held down and press the up arrow key, left arrow key, down arrow, right, you'll see it's just jumping around the corners of the table. So that's very useful for navigating around in large tables, helps you to get to the beginning or the end of your table, or to the final column or the first column. Now one problem that does occur very often in lists is you will see obviously I have my column headings here. It helps me, that help me identify what each field of each record means. So we have date, customer name, movie title, etc. Now that's okay when you're first starting out and you only have a few records in your list. But what if you have, as I have here, quite a few? And if I start to scroll down, you will instantly see the problem that eventually my column headings disappear. And so a very simple thing you can do is, in this case, I'm going to click in cell A5. So in this case, it's the first cell in the first row of data below the column headings. I then go to the window menu and click on freeze panes. OK, now this time, if I scroll down, you will immediately see that what happens is that those cells, my column headings, are now locked along with all the rows above that. So rows 1, 2, 3, 4 are now locked on the spreadsheet and as I scroll down they don't move. And The obvious benefit of that is that no matter how long that table is, I can scroll up and down and I can see very clearly what each column of information actually means. Now in this table it's not very complicated to work it out, but if you have a large table with maybe 15, 20 columns of information, multiple dates, multiple currency entries, then obviously it may be uh, more difficult to work out what each column entry means and you need to see those column headings to help you along. And freezing panes is the best way of doing that. So I would say freezing panes is an essential feature for working with long lists. Now if you need to switch that off, you click on Window and just click Unfreeze Panes and then you have your spreadsheet back completely unlocked again. Now let's say you want to have some of those columns locked as well. And in this case I might want to have the reference number and the date column, both those locked. And in this case all I need to do is click on cell C5. And the key thing to really remember about freezing the spreadsheet or freezing columns and rows is that whatever cell you select, everything above and everything to the left is what will get locked. So in this case, when I freeze panes, columns A and B won't move. When I scroll right, and rows 4, 3, 2, and 1 won't move when I scroll down. Okay, it'll make more sense if I actually do it. So I'm going to go to the window menu now and choose freeze panes. Now if I scroll down, you'll see it's essentially as before. The column headings stay fixed and my data scrolls up and down as normal. But this time I'm going to scroll right and you'll see what happens is that my columns start to disappear except for A and B. So now I can just see four columns of my data table. 
And that again is useful in larger lists uh, where you have many more columns and you want to see the last few columns and the first few columns together. And this is one way you can do it by freezing columns as well as rows. Okay, now I'm going to undo that, click on window again, unfreeze panes. I'm going to click on A5 again, go back to the window menu, refreeze or freeze panes and I can scroll as I had before. Now there's another feature that I'd like to show you which is very useful. I'm just going to unfreeze. The reason I'm doing this is the feature I'm going to show you now doesn't work very well with the freeze panes switched on. So keep that in mind if you do choose to use this one. And what I'm going to do now is show you split. And to activate that, I'll click any row, well, more or less any row, row 14 in fact, click on window, choose split. And you'll see this gray horizontal bar appears. Now, in fact, I can actually move that just by clicking on the bar and dragging up and down. So I can move the location. But what I'd like to show you here, first of all, is on the right side of the screen, you'll see I have two scroll bars. Now what that means is, if I come back, you can see I can now scroll the top half of the screen independent of the bottom half. I'll click into the lower half of the screen, I'll just show you again, I can scroll that up and down completely independent of the top half. So now I have actually got the top half duplicated on the bottom half. Now the advantage of that again is in a long list is that you can see different parts of the table simultaneously which you wouldn't be able to see normally. So what this does, it gives you a bit of flexibility working with longer lists. Now one quick way of removing that split is to simply click on it and drag it up to the top of the sheet, release the mouse button and the split is removed. And now I'm going to click anywhere in the middle of the table, go back to the window menu, choose split one more time. And this time I've actually got a four way split. So the screen is split into quarters. And again, I can drag that vertical bar right and left if should I need to. And this time it operates in a slightly different way. If you go down to the bottom of the screen here, we'll see I've got two horizontal scroll bars. And again, I can scroll the left side of the screen, right and left. I can also scroll the right side of the screen, independent of the left side. And I still have my vertical scrolling, but this time you'll notice that these two the top two quarters, if you like, don't operate entirely independently because they both scroll vertically together. So it's not really, you don't have four completely uh, independent or discrete screens. So again, I mean, that just gives you that bit of extra flexibility when you're working with lists, especially if you have a large list where you need to see two different parts of the table at the same time. Using the freeze panes feature and split gives you that flexibility. So I'm going to remove the split. I'm going to drag that all the way across the left. I'll remove that. And I'll show you the menu version of removing the split. I'll leave that horizontal split there. Go to the window menu, choose remove split, and that's back as it was. And finally, I'm going to go back to A5, click on window, choose freeze panes, and that's my preferred option. I hope you found that useful. That will come in handy when you're working with longer lists. In the next tutorial, I'm going to start looking at sorting your lists. So thanks for watching this one and see you next time.